Welcome to a wild day of legal and political developments surrounding who else but the president. One of his top loyalists in the House was just arrested on insider trading charges in a plot that was so brazen, and includes the White House South Lawn, by the way, as it was described by federal prosecutors today that you have got to see it to believe it. We'll have much more on this story and this entire sort of culture of corruption stench that's starting to grow around the president coming up. But we're also going to talk about the political fallout from this story as well, because the bigger story is that it arguably couldn't come at a worse time for House Republicans, which is where we begin tonight. Folks, the anti-Trump midterm wave is on full display right now, and the president seems intent on diving headfirst right into it. Democrats surged again in a reliably red district that the president carried easily again. The Republican candidate, Troy Balderson, is barely eking out a lead after last night's vote, the result which we deem is still too close to call because there are more votes to be counted than the margin between the two candidates. But this close result should be a giant flashing warning sign for the GOP. They significantly outspent Democrats in this district, and the president swooped in at the 11th hour on Saturday to fire up the base. Today, the RNC said that event is what carried Balderson across the finish line. Do you think the visit on Saturday even kept this thing close? Oh, the visit on Saturday is why we won. Well, the president also took credit for the apparent victory today, as you might expect he would. But that suggests that the situation is even worse than some Republicans feared, because that kind of rescue mission will be impossible to replicate in 435 races this November. And if you had a base turnout problem in this district, then you have a major problem. So that's why not sure I buy that. But for his part, the president today insisted, as long as I campaign and or support Senate and House candidates within reason, they will win. And if I find the time, which I must, we will have a giant red wave. And a few hours later, this tweet, red wave. But folks, the results from last night suggest that a suburban rebellion is what's actually brewing right now, and it's brewing against this president. The Democratic candidate surge in Ohio 12 was powered by voters close to Columbus and the suburbs of Columbus, Ohio. Democrats significantly outnumbered Republicans in last night's primaries in another suburban area, Missouri's second district. That includes the St. Louis suburbs. Then you have Kathy McMorris Rogers, barely eked out the top spot last night in the jungle primary out there in Washington. She's a member of leadership whose districts includes the suburbs of Spokane. Spokane! Folks, if Republicans are going to struggle in a district that touches the suburbs of America's 101st largest city, then the struggle is going to be real. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel, so thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Beat the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.